Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. You've got Bird over there at his casa, and you got Big L hanging out over here at his house. I know you could probably tell by the background um, where we where we are at. No, we don't have COVID, so don't worry about mm -hmm. that. It's more of uh, schedules just didn't align right for Bird and I, the diplomats here. So we thought to do just one more Zoom call here. <laughs> but man, we want to get some great dividend news for you today. And we are pumped up, even though we're not together, to talk to you about dividend stocks and pit two colossals against each other. Man, we are pumped. But before we get into that, everyone, come on. You know what to do here. Smash that subscribe button. Give us that thumbs up if you haven't already. We appreciate it. We're pumped. We're hyped up. Lanny, you're all the way over there. I'm over here. Let's get after it and talk about two dividend stocks. Thanks, Bert. Exactly. We've heard a lot from the community, especially in one of our last videos. You wanted to put two big dividend stocks together, one being a dividend aristocrat, the other on its way to being a dividend aristocrat, given the four years. The comment was, can you please put T. Rowe Price against BlackRock, two of the biggest investment management firms head to head in the battle for man this is right we we were excited and as we started digging into the numbers there's a lot of great stuff here to talk about these two companies so buckle up everybody get ready we have another dividend stock battle royale here for you today as you know dividend investing community and those that follow the dividend diplomats we focus on three simple dividend investing metrics. Those three metrics are the price to earnings rate, share price over earnings per share, and we like to use forward projected earnings per share. Second, we like the dividend payout ratio, which is the dividend annual payout over that earnings per share that we use in the price to earnings ratio. And then last, but definitely not least, is that dividend growth and the dividend you know growth rate history that that dividend company provides but Bert, i know we're not done what's that bonus metric we like to look at? you beat me right to it and i was about to jump right and say you missed the big bonus here no we're not talking about those bonus pokemon cards and your happy meal we're here to talk to you about how we compare the dividend yield against the companies against one each other against each other and we do that after we're comfortable with the other three metrics to make sure we are looking at two great dividend stocks. And then we consider yield. Exactly, Bert. If they pass the metric, we'll take a look at the yield. Because let's be honest, we want to live as that main source of income on that journey. Financial freedom, baby. Yeah. So in today's video, we're going to compare these two stocks. Head to head, Lanny is going to represent the big gun, BlackRock. I'm going to be representing T. Rowe Price over here. Yes, we are excited. We're pumped up. Let's get right in, everybody. Let's talk about the dividend, dividend, dividend stock screener, T. Rowe Price and BlackRock. Lanny, do you want to kick this one off here with the first metro? Let's talk about BlackRock's PE ratio. Come on, let's hear it. What are your numbers? Will you listen up, Jabroni? I'm going to check T. Rowe Price in at the SmackDown Hotel. I'm going to take them down assets under management boulevard. I'm going to say, where's your I shares and your ETF. And then I'm going to lay it to smack it down. If you smell what the black rock is cooking. So to get started, like Bert said, we're going to dive into that price to earnings ratio. And black rock is tr currently trading at a blistering $723.17 uh, $723 right now as a close of business on February 10th, Bert. Can you believe that? Yeah, I can't believe I took a sip of tea right before you said that because I almost spit it out right there because it's not too often you see companies with a share price of over $700. That's insane. But what are their forward earnings, Lanny? Come on. Let's just see this. I want to hear. I want to see what this PE ratio is. Forward earnings are priced at right now $35.85 by analysts for 2021. And doing the math, they're trading at a current price to earnings ratio of about 20 times earnings. So, Bert, 20 times earnings for BlackRock. Man. Or the S&P 500. 
Yep, below the S&P 500. But here's the question. Let's see where T. Rowe falls on this listing. T. Rowe's share price at the time we're filming this is not 723. It's only $164.13. Their forward earnings, $12.01. That gives them a P.E. ratio of 13.67. So much below BlackRock and also well below the market, too. Not bad. All right. So T. Rowe no. price ends that price to earnings battle, huh, Bertie? Yeah, it looks like it, but that's only one metric. So let's jump right into the dividend payout ratio. Lanny, what's BlackRock's metrics looking like here? So BlackRock currently pays out a very solid, and again, I, I'm not lying when I say this, an annual dividend of $16.52 per share. That's funny. It's actually more than the earnings per share that t -Row has that I just said. No, it's all just numbers, but it really comes down. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a $4.13 quarterly dividend for BlackRock. And when you do the math with that dividend over that expected earnings, the payout ratio is at 46%. So in that perfect payout ratio, it's and 60%. All right. So we got a nice check mark there for BlackRock. So let's see what Tiro has. Annual dividend is four dollars and thirty-two cents, with that quarterly dividend of one dollar and eight cent. Take that, divide it by the twelve dollars and one cent earnings. That gives you a dividend payout ratio of just under thirty-six percent. So here, two big checks for T. Row and BlackRock. At the end of the day, both companies have plenty of room to continue growing their dividend going forward. I mean, Bird, that's obviously rock solid. Hard to compete. Yeah. Um, yeah, but let's go into three. Let's check out. Let's check this out, Lanny. You ready? I'm gonna check talk some dividend growth rate and dividend growth history. What's up with BlackRock? Talk to me. Uh, well, BlackRock isn't quite a dividend aristocrat, which is a company that's increased their dividend for 25 consecutive years. But they have increased their dividend for at least 11, going on 12 straight years of dividend increases. Now, when you do the math from where their dividend was five years ago around this time to now, the average dividend growth rate is somewhere around 16%. Uh, and that last one that they just did is actually um, a little over, what was that, Bert? Was that 13 to 14% increase that BlackRock just announced a little bit ago? Yep, I saw it was actually a 14% increase. They increased that annual dividend. The, yep. Or that quarterly dividend, I apologize, from 363 to 413. Yep, so about 14% dividend increase. Not too bad. Not too bad, Bert. But what is too Yeah, and I mean, let's, but, but let's just say this quickly. It doesn't matter that they're not an aristocrat. You got to start somewhere on that streak. And these metrics are very strong for BlackRock. So let's see how T. Rowe compares against it. Yeah, of course, they're that dividend aristocrat. That's what we've been highlighting here. They've increased that dividend for 35 consecutive years. And on top of that, guess who also just announced a dividend increase? That's right, T. Rowe Price announced one this week exactly. We were expecting them to deliver a nice solid increase here in, um, in February and man, oh man, did they deliver. They crushed Lanny's expectation that we talked about in the last video out of the water and announced a 20% dividend increase right there. So the company was right in line with their five-year average dividend growth rate. So fantastic, fantastic dividend streak his, history and growth rate here for Tiro. It's true. It's damn true, Bert. Mm -hmm. But hey, BlackRock does perform pretty well, as I said earlier, too. So all right, all right but let's get into this bonus metric here, Lanny. The dividend yield. We've gotten through three. Let's move into number four. What is BlackRock's dividend yield? What are, what are we seeing? Well, first, the S&P yield somewhere between 1.6 and 1.7% right now. So that's the market as a whole. That's the yield as a whole. So if you were to own and buy some sort of Vanguard S&P 500 fund or insert BlackRock S&P 500 fund or even a Tiro S&P 500 fund, you're probably going to yield at 1.6 to 1.7%. So BlackRock, with the current dividend of over $16 plus dollars annually, over that share price of over $700, actually still yields 2.28% um, per, which is much higher yeah. than that savings rate right now. <laughs> yes, it is. Anything's almost higher than a savings rate right now, but that beats the market and that beats that saving rate. So heck yeah, BlackRock. 
let's check out T row here with that annual dividend of four dollars and thirty two cents divided by that share price of one hundred sixty four. That gives you a dividend yield of two point six three percent. So it beats all, beats yeah your savings rate, the S and P, and it ekes out BlackRock here with a nice little premium here. So now, Bird. Yeah. Which company do you own currently? I own T Row Price. What What about you? You know I'm all over that with T Row, baby. I've owned them for a while yeah. as well. And, and I tell you what, every twenty percent increase I've received. I just nod my head. Actually, that zero price, a little nostalgia here, is that's where my first ever investment in February of 2009. I had an account there, and I still do uh, for nostalgia reasons because uh, I'll never forget when I committed to starting my investment journey back when I was, wow, to that, I mean. What old, year were you born? I was, I was, I'm I was, kidding. I was 20 years old, actually. So. You yeah. Hey, you, you got to love the nostalgia. It's great to own a company that has that back meaning to it as well. That always adds something nice to it. Now, to but give hey, a though, Bert, I mean, BlackRock and T-Row, both trading less than the S&P 500. Obviously, T-Row beats there. What about the payout ratio? Which one do you like? I mean, BlackRock's got that perfect dividend payout ratio in that range we're looking for. So we can't can't beat perfect, but T Row isn't much further behind since they're just below that low end of the forty percent range. Honestly, I think they're both pretty strong in this regard. And what are your thoughts on the dividend growth history here? You know, both are pretty actually. I mean, you can't knock a double digit growth rate on the dividend. I mean I, you know, T-Row, they have a lot more benefits that we'll get into. You know, obviously, from the metrics alone, Bert, I'm just going to raise your hand. T-Row price wins in the metric battle. Um, sure. But there are a few soft things that I think investors and the viewers may want to consider. Because, you know, when we get into assets under management between the two firms, you know, BlackRock is the biggest in the world at almost $9 trillion of assets under management, Bert. Yeah, that's insane. I have nothing more to say than it's just absolute insanity. And what's nuts is Tiro Price is still one of the largest asset asset management companies, and they only have one point four seven trillion from their last earnings release. So that's a lot of money on its own. But take that, quadruple it, and you're and you're right where BlackRock is overall. But here's an interesting piece, Lanny. You keep m- mentioning here that BlackRock owns iShares. What's cool about the assets under management for iShares? Assets under management for iShares is, uh, you know, pretty much bigger than what T. Rowe Price is. Period. Yeah, it's, it's well over $2 billion there for iShares. So, yeah, the competitor and the ETFs and the, index, the low-cost index funds that they offer individual investors is still larger than T. Rowe Price as an entity. That's, it's just insane how large of a company BlackRock is. I have nothing more to say. Yeah, we're not, and we're not going to get in a total return uh, because I know a lot of investors that watch us look at, oh, well, you know, the price is going to go up faster with BlackRock or T. Rowe. I mean, we're strictly looking at investing for dividend payments that are consistent, reliable, and that grow in the future. And, you know, if your plan is not to sell shares and to to slim down your position, then, you know, your dividend income right now is growing at a much faster rate with T. Rowe price than BlackRock, especially the last five years. Um, And I really do, Bert, I really think T. Rowe price has been able to do quite a bit especially in the last few years because of one important element on the balance sheet. No debt, debt free. They are living that debt free life as a company. And it's just always something really cool to see when times got tough for a lot of other companies. You didn't have to make that tough call between making interest payments and dividend payments because ask all those companies that cut the dividend, which which stakeholder won out the debt holders or the equity holders. So T. Rowe Price, never have to worry about paying off any debt and putting cash flow towards interest expense. It's a really cool feature that they have. Yeah, I mean, they, they've reached financial freedom. No debt, plenty of cash flow to cover their expenses. Um, <laughs> but at the end of the day, Lanny, here's the question. What are you doing with this analysis now? What is your final take? Honestly, 
it's weird because I think if I look at the spreadsheet back, how I track my investments correctly, you know, I first started buying pro price in the 60s. And yeah, I mean, I bought them right after you told uh, you did. I'm like, yeah, it's a great investment. Let me take you back on this, but continue anyway. It's like, who would have thought a hundred dollar appreciation? Like, I might want to buy them again because, sure, the yield isn't three percent, four percent, but you're getting a double digit growth rate with a firm that's growing, you know, year after year. With, and obviously, the market has a lot to do with that. Um, and they're obviously their dividend metrics are very sound price earnings yeah. pay out and grow. Yeah. I think you hit on a very important point here, Lanny, you ignore what you bought them for in the past. That's not relevant to this investment decision for today to continue going forward. You're looking at the metrics today, right now, and what makes sense in the current market. And you look at T row and everything you said, it checks every metric of our stock screener and you're getting an above average, above market return on the yield. So yeah, it's trading at a lower multiple from BlackRock. It has a fantastic dividend history. I agree with your conclusion on that. T row is gonna be on my watch list and we'll see, we'll see if I end up buying any this month. And to give everybody a little frame of mind, back in 16, I probably bought Hero back in mid 16, let's call it five years ago, they were yielding maybe three, 3.1%. 3 yep. So it's not like they were yielding 5% at the time of purchase. And even at 65 to $70 per share, where I was buying that, then the metrics are probably pretty similar to where they are now, they have grown. Hence, why your share price is higher. Mm -hmm. consistency that's what we like to see that's how you can grow your dividend for 35 consecutive years through good times and bad as an asset management company consistency is key and we love it so you know, just would i like them at 140 yeah i love them yeah would i like them at 120 of course would i like them back at 65 those metrics would be screaming but i'm kidding so the question is what do all of you think about these two companies? What's your take on BlackRock versus T Row? Do you which one do you own in this battle royale? Who do you think comes out on top? Do you think it's Lanny and Black the Rock, or do you have T Row Price over here? No, no WWE wrestler to compare to. But man, that Black the Rock just worked out perfectly. So let us know in the comments what your thoughts are. I tell you what, that was pure coincidence on the fly. It just kind of flowed a little bit right when I was in the heat of the moment. I swear. Um, yeah, I hope it's true. Yeah, let us know in the comments. Let us know which one you own. Let us know if this is one of the stocks you're buying right now or a stock that you're adding to your, you know, stocks to buy list, aka the watch list. We were very curious. Um, again, we appreciate mm -hmm. you listening to The Diplomats. This is Burton Lanny. Over and Over out. Over and out.